Stormont Castle. Before work commenced on the Parliament buildings in the 1920s, Stormont Castle was the main building in the Stormont estate, and its history dates back to the early 19th century. The original estate was known as Storm Mount because of its exposed high location, whipped by the winds which came in off Belfast Lock. It was originally established by the Reverend John Cleland, a church rector from the nearby town of Newton Ards, who built what was described as a plain house in the estate in 1830, a far cry from the grand castle which stands today. The change from a large, if unremarkable, family home to a much larger castle took place in the late 1850s as part of the wider development of the Stormont estate. The Cleland family engaged a local architect, Thomas Turner, to redesign the house as a baronial castle, so cladding was added and stone quarried from nearby Scrabo Hill, while turrets were built, topped by fearsome griffins. The Cleland family eventually left the castle in 1893 to live abroad, but there's a monument to them at St Elizabeth's Church in nearby Dundonald, just half a mile down the road past Knox Cemetery. In 1921, the entire estate was put up for sale, just at the time the new Northern Ireland Parliament was looking for a home, following the partition of Ireland into two countries. The government purchased the estate, and a new Parliament buildings was soon commissioned by King George V. It was originally planned that the castle would be knocked down, but instead it became the official residence of the Prime Minister of Northern Ireland and a meeting place for the newly established Northern Irish Cabinet, as well as housing offices for government officials. The Northern Ireland Parliament met initially at City Hall and then at the Presbyterian Church's Assemblies College, later Union Theological College, in the city centre, until Parliament Buildings was finally opened in 1932. During the Troubles, the castle again changed ownership, housing the official office of the British Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. In this role, the castle has become one of the most prominent buildings in Northern Ireland, the scene of the frantic negotiations which preceded the signing of the Belfast Agreement in 1998. The castle recently embarked on a new phase in its history, with the then Secretary of State, Peter Hain, vacating his offices there in response to the successful establishment of the new Northern Ireland Assembly in May 2007, quipping that never had an eviction notice been so eagerly anticipated or so warmly received. It is now the residence of the First and Deputy First Ministers of the Northern Ireland Office and meeting place of the Northern Irish Executive. The castle isn't open to the public, but you can see its imposing turrets and buildings nestling among the trees from several viewpoints on the estate. 